One of my favorite parts when I go to the Philharmonic is when the orchestra starts tuning. It just reminds me of my own gradual progress towards a steady and focused mind. But tuning one's mind is not a trivial task. I remember my first serious meditation retreat. The instruction was very simple. Just pay attention to the breath. When your mind wanders, try to bring it back to the breath. sounded very simple, but it took me a long, long time to actually really understand what I needed to do with my mind to get into that nicely tuned and focused state. It was a long and hard process. Imagine a technology that could help tune your mind faster, easier, and in a more efficient way. Just like an electric tuner makes life easier for a musician. In the past years, we have been developing such technology here at MIT, and we have successfully shown that it works, not just to help tune your mind, but it also helps patients with mental health problems to revert their pathology. But first, let me take a step back for a second and explain why it is so difficult to tune our minds, so hard to focus our attention. Studies have shown that even when we really, really want to pay attention to something like maybe this talk, at some point about half of us will drift off in a daydream or have this urge to check our phones. And this is because the human mind has a natural tendency to do things more efficiently with less resources. This is, it tries to automate everything that we do. So, as soon as we finally learn how to do something, for example, brush our teeth, the process gets shelved into an automated process, which then frees up brain power that we can use for other, more important processes. However, if we don't use these resources on other more challenging things, the resources get quickly hijacked and we start thinking about the past or predicting and preparing for the future. When we automate things, resources get freed up. If we don't actively engage in something interesting or new to learn, we start mind wandering. Let's use a simple example to illustrate this driving a car. In case you drive, you probably noticed that driving gets easier over time. Maybe you can remember the first time you got behind the wheel. You were nervous. Everything was new. So you had to focus on multiple things at the same time. For example, which gear to use, what is happening in front of you, behind you, maybe which pedal to press, and so on. But naturally, after time and with practice, it became more and more effortless. And at some point, you were so good at driving that there was no more need for improvement. And you may have started a conversation, or listening to the radio, or hopefully, not very often, check your phone. When this happens, the mind defaults to its heedless, unmindful, and thoughtless mode. And in the brain, this process is performed by a special network. This set of brain regions is called the default mode network, 
and has two main nodes, one in the medial prefrontal lobe and one in the posterior cingulate cortex. So for instance, today, when you drove from home to your workplace, how much of the ride do you actually remember? You surely remember the way, but do you remember exactly how many times you changed lines or had to stop at a red light? I bet you don't. Instead, you were probably thinking about the upcoming meeting or what you will be doing on the weekend or having for dinner this night. When we think about the past or the future, this network kicks in and we are on autopilot mode. The issue is that this autopilot mode not only applies to driving, in fact, it applies to almost every single thing we do at a regular basis, and we don't even notice it. Studies have shown that we spend about half of our, of our waking time in this mindless state, and that our mind activity constantly falls back to activating this network in the brain. What is more, studies have systematically found that the underlying brain network, the default mode network, is hyperactive and hyperconnected in anxiety, depression, PTSD, and more severe mental health problems like schizophrenia, where it tends to occupy even longer and more prolonged periods of time during the day. And that is why it's so difficult for these persons to literally switch out and change to other activities or other thoughts. By contrast, Studies with experienced meditators have systematically shown a reduction in default mode network activity and that the level of this reduction correlates with their happiness and well-being. So, because it's really, really difficult to learn how to correctly tune and focus our minds, especially for people with mental health issues, here at MIT we are using this novel technology to help with this mental tuning. So, let's check it out. In our lab, we have been studying the brains of patients with schizophrenia for a long time and have discovered that the default mode network is hyperactivated and hyperconnected and that the amount of this hyperactivity or hyperconnectivity directly relates to symptom severity. We now can get a personal fingerprint of the patient's default mode network and by targeted real-time neurofeedback provide them with a mental tuner that helps them better learn how to actually focus their attention by providing first-person experience of how it feels to exert the right mental effort. Our results with this personalized neurofeedback not only has helped patients with their learning process, it helps them feel how to actually tune their mind, it gives them back the control over their minds by directly linking their subjective experience with the feedback of how to reduce their default mode network. And with this, help them reduce their symptomatology. It took me almost two years of daily meditation to tune my mind. I am convinced this can be learned in a more effective way and in a shorter time. This technology not only can help patients regain control over their minds and lead them to a happier life, but it may also prevent any loved one from getting a debilitating mental health problem in the future or help them deal with anxiety or depression during these tough times we are currently living. This technology is a step in the direction of personalized mental training. I want to dedicate this talk and all our efforts to all those who will benefit from it one day.